The Lord be with you. Good evening and welcome. It's the fourth uh, Sunday of Easter, which traditionally is always Good Shepherd Sunday. I looked into why uh, the fourth Sunday of Easter is Good Shepherd Sunday, and as near as I can tell, it's because we've always done it that way before. <laughs> for over some thousands of years, for over a thousand years, and uh, uh, that's a lot of momentum, and far be it for me to try to change the direction of that ship. Um, it's a good tradition. Uh, it always has something new for us. After this service, uh, blood pressure checks are available for you if you wish. Voters meeting on Tuesday at 6.30. Opening hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. <laughs> Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Christ, our Good Shepherd, 
As we gather as a community today around your bodily presence to receive your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, guide us by your Spirit to embody your mercy and compassion for all who are in need. For you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd, we confess to you that many times we are unthankful for all you give us to sustain our bodies and lives. We long after things that are temporal and earthly, ignoring your gifts and ignoring those around us in need. Forgive us. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Like sheep, we are distracted and wander away. We forget who we are as baptized children of God and fail to respond to your shepherding. Forgive us. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the deepest, darkest times of life, we struggle to be confident in your presence and protection. When we don't feel your presence, we conclude that you are not with us and have abandoned us. We seek to find our own solutions and comfort, at times withdrawing from your protection. Forgive us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. When life is going great and we stand above those who oppose us, we gloat in our own intelligence and abilities, forgetting the one who bestows all the blessings of our lives. Forgive us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we walk through this broken world, we overlook the goodness and mercy that flows into our lives from you. We become short-sighted and locked up in the present, ignoring the hope and promise of a bright future in your kingdom. Forgive us, good shepherd. Jesus, our good shepherd, hears our cries and says to us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. God lives up to what he said before. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like straying sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Receive the forgiveness won for you through Christ's death and resurrection. I forgive you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.
first reading is from Acts chapter 4, for the fourth Sunday of Easter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem, and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. But when they had set them into the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Christ Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is a stone that, you reje that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone in the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does, God love, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because he keeps his commandments and, and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us and by the spirit whom he has, who has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Be Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <coughs> Hallelujah. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text is the gospel lesson. As a student in Germany, I, I traveled once to the small city of Rotenburg. It's one of the best preserved examples of a medieval city. It's a walled city. Uh, it has a castle, a market square, the classic town hall with the clock tower, Fachwerk homes and, and the cobblestone streets. As you might imagine, lots of cuckoo clocks and beer steins are sold in Rotenburg. I was walking along the wall, which offered a nice view not just of the city inside, but of, a, of the rolling country outside, when I noticed a shepherd and his dog sitting on the hillside with about 50 grazing sheep. I thought to myself, Groth, you've never talked to a real shepherd before. Besides, he looks lonely. You really ought to talk, go talk to that guy. And so I did. I made my way down to the pasture. It had been raining on and off all day. The shepherd was wearing a black trench coat, was sitting on a rock. He looked miserable and was not particularly happy to see me. I guess one doesn't become a shepherd if he enjoys the company of people. In any event, I introduced myself and tried to strike up a conversation. His dog sat about 15 feet behind me and with every exhaled breath growled a low burn growl. But whenever I turned and made eye contact with him, he'd turn up the volume a few notches and raise one lip to show me his impressive incisors. I asked the shepherd about sheep and he told me they do indeed wander a lot. And their wandering gets them into a lot of trouble, first with the dog and then with him. And he found it very annoying, their desire to stray. He used the, ver the word Wanderlust. It's one of those German words, you know, when they, they're looking for a new word, they just combine two others, wander and lust. Lust, desire, wanderlust. Every time I read, all we like sheep have gone astray, each to his own way, I smile a little, remembering that grumpy shepherd and his grumpy dog and the word wanderlust. And I see myself doing that, a strain, sometimes out of wickedness and sometimes out of aimlessness but strain nonetheless. In any event, this shepherd didn't have much of anything positive to say. In fact, I don't think he much liked his job, nor the sheep, nor the little dog. In this day of cheap electric fences, uh, why was he out there in the first place? My suspicion is he was hired by the Rotenburg Tourism Bureau. Can you hear that conversation? We have the wall, we have the cobblestones, we have the Fachwerk and the clock tower. All we need are some sheep and a shepherd to complete the picture. That's when the mayor suggested his ne'er-do-well brother-in-law was fired yet again, needed a job, done deal. In our text, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who doesn't own the sheep, when he sees the wolf coming, he flees. In the Bible, a hired hand was a laborer, usually employed only a limited time. They didn't have a lot of skills, but they could pick up field stones before planting time. They could help with the harvest of grapes. And in a pinch, they could watch over a flock for a time. Typically, however, a hired hand moved from one menial job to the next. In Jesus' day, a day's wages for a hired hand was one denarius. You didn't pay them much, nor did you expect much from them. Some worked hard, others didn't. No matter, each got his denarius at the end of the day. In fact, since they were so poorly paid, there were laws protecting them 
from exploitation. For example, Leviticus 19, the wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. That is, pay him without delay because he might be depending on that denarius to feed his family. In the parable, the hired hand wouldn't have known the sheep because in all likelihood he hasn't spent that much time with them. The owner needed some extra help and brought him in for a time until a more permanent arrangement could be made. Contrast that with the true shepherd. Many were born to the task. The family owned a flock. A boy was sent out with the flock as soon as he is old enough to go. The sheep became his companions, friends even. To you and me, sheep all pretty much look the same. But a true shepherd recognizes them, knows their names, knows their personalities. The family's livelihood was all wrapped up in the welfare of the flock. You can imagine then the owners would be much more protective of the sheep than would a hired hand. Some of you remember the old Jack Benny radio show and his legendary stinginess that was part of his radio persona. When a crook held him up and said, your money or your life, there was humor in the long silence that followed the question as he thought it over. A hired hand didn't have to think it over. They were not his sheep. He didn't own them. He didn't really know them. Besides, he was, he was paid one stinking denarius a day. To take on thieves and robbers or a pack of wolves was well above his pay grade. I could de be dead wrong about that guy outside Rotenburg, but it seemed to me he thought little of the sheep, less of being a shepherd, my guess is if someone pointed a gun at him and demanded mutton chops, he would have said, be my guest. Take that one over there too and I'll throw in the dog. <laughs> I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He makes sacrifices for the sheep. Pastors are called the shepherds or under shepherds. As in any vocation, there are pastors who give the vocation a bad reputation. They neither work hard nor go out of their way to care for the sick or the grieving. They don't challenge themselves or others. Their preaching is careless, if not shooting from the hip. They got it. They got in it for the wrong reasons, and they stay in it for the wrong reasons. And as soon as things start going poorly, they let the district president know they're ready for a new challenge. Hirelings. Those guys are out there. But my experience is the vast majority are not like that. Conversely, there are some congregations that treat their pastors as mere hirelings, their teachers as hirelings. Before I go on, I, I've never felt this way at Good Shepherd, but it's something to watch out for in the life of the church. There are congregations out there that eat up their church workers like sunflower seeds, and when they're done with them, spit out the empty hulls, one after another. In the New Testament era, hirelings were paid little, but little was expected of them. With some church workers, they're paid little, and yet they have the highest of expectations placed on them without the common courtesy of giving them any respect. Don't you feel a little for the hireling in our text? He's probably not a true shepherd, but he finds himself watching over a flock of sheep. A pack of wolves or a gang of thieves comes along and they're greedy and hungry. What to do? He, he weighs his options. The lives of the sheep or his own life. The hireling, he doesn't own the sheep. 
He's just paid a, one lousy denarius a day. He reckons his life is worth more. So he skedaddles. Who of us wouldn't? I guess that's the critical difference. The hireling, he's thinking about the money and his life, and he makes a perfectly reasonable decision. The good shepherd, on the other hand, he's thinking only about those sheep, and he makes a perfectly unreasonable decision. He lays down his life for dirty, stupid, annoying, wandering sheep. Who would do such a thing? It's not rational. It's not prudent for a hired hand or a shepherd to lay down his life for the sheep. Jesus has really nothing to gain by doing that. The demise of the flock would be no skin off his back, but for the fact that he loves them, of course. The salvation on the, of the flock, on the other hand, that would require much more than just skin off his back. Jesus is the only shepherd really worth talking about because he's the only shepherd who was flogged for you the only shepherd who laid down his life for you. You too have strayed, right? Sometimes out of aimlessness, sometimes out of wickedness. Wanderlust. You know the word. You've lived it. Yet see how he loves you. You have this wanderlust, this insatiable, insatiable desire to stray, because the old sinful nature always thinks things are better, more fun, when you put some distance between you and the shepherd and between his laws and yours. But a lamb who separates himself from the shepherd and from the flock is heading straight towards catastrophe. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I know my own, and my own know me. Notice that preposition, my. It's the sense of ownership that it reveals. He owns us, not like a slave master. No, he takes ownership and responsibility for us. Though our sins belong to us alone, he takes ownership of them and lays down his life for the sheep. It's unthinkable for him to cut and run. That would be disastrous for the flock. And he can't stand the idea of losing even one. Remember? He taught that God is like a shepherd who had 99 out of 100 sheep all present and accounted for. In a day before barbed wire fences, those aren't bad numbers. 99%. As a student, I'd be delighted to see a 99% on top of any paper or any test. The hired hands, seeing that 99%, would say, close enough, let's call it a day. But the good shepherd, for him, 99 is totally unacceptable. Because that means there's one he knows and loves who's out there lost, alone, vulnerable. A sheep of his own fold, a lamb of his own flock, one for whom he would even exchange his life. So what does he do? He leaves the 99 in the open country, the text says, and tracks that one down and puts it on his shoulders and carries it back to the fold, restores it to the flock. The economics of it all, leaving the 99 in the open country in order to find the one, that doesn't make any sense to us. Unless you know you were the one who was lost by nature, vulnerable, alone. Until the good shepherd found you, picked you up,
carried you home. Then we understand the parable. And we understand what kind of shepherd Jesus is. That's what love does. It fights, it struggles, it searches, it carries, it forgives, it restores, and it makes sacrifices. It does not give up. That Jesus should lay down his life for us dirty old sheep, it must mean he loves us. How can we respond to that? What else can we do other than thank him, praise him, serve him, and obey him? Amen. <coughs> the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to confess our faith singing the credo hymn 953. Uh, just a reminder, please fill out the <coughs> attendance uh, pad so that we have a record of who's here and more importantly, who's not here, the one that we need to go out and look for collectively.
In our prayers, we pray uh, for Dan and Karen Kaditz celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary, for Marge Gecki celebrating her 88th birthday. We pray for those who are ill, for Karen Westfall, who's in, in hospitalized, for Robert Rubin in hospice care. We pray for Edith Block recovering from surgery, for Bill Roser in hospice, for Rosemary Bayliss in hospice care, for Michael Grosnick. We pray for the family of Norman Zastro, who died on Thursday. The funeral will take place here on Tuesday at 11 a.m. And we pray for James Rubaki, Kevin Rollert, and Zach Krieger, who are deployed with the armed forces. And we welcome back uh, Jeremy Rolstad, who is now home. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the Hope Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O God of peace, who has brought again from death the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip your church this day with everything good, that we may do your will, working in us that which is pleasing in your sight through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O God of peace, as the world has many false shepherds who seek to lead your people astray, help us to know our true shepherd's voice and listen only to him. Have mercy on all those who have been deceived. Open their hearts once more to your truth, that they may be returned to the safety of the church's fold. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, as your Son gave his life for the sins of the whole world, let his voice be heard by those held in prison, that they too may know of his forgiving love and be brought into his flock. If they have been imprisoned for doing good, let them not lose hope or despair of your care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, as our good shepherd takes up his lambs onto his shoulders in the waters of holy baptism, sustain all those who reside in nursing homes with the truth that he will safely bear them through the latter years of this life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, as your Son has loved, help us to live in his love. Keep us from hurting one another in word or deed. Rescue those who suffer harm in their own homes and grant repentance to those who raise their voices or hands to abuse those who have given, who, whom you have given them to love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, as your Son of, of his own accord has laid down his life for his sheep, give us the confidence in his continued care that we may not doubt but believe that he will never fail us. Strengthen the sick and the suffering in this truth, especially those we've named. Be with those who are grieving, especially Mary and the whole Zastro family. And be with those who are deployed, assuring them of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, thank you for 30 years together for Dan and Karen. We pray for all the marriages of our church that you would bless them and keep them. Husband and wives love one another as you love us. We thank you for Marge and her 88th birthday, and we pray that you would continue to give her strength for the needs of the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of peace, as your son laid down his life and took it up again to prepare a place for us in your house that we might live forever, comfort those who grieve with the truth that our departed brothers and sisters are truly at home with you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of his eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.